started to include the entire verse 1 through 10, but I thought it might be just fitting to deal with verses 9 and 10. The King James has these rendering, it says, And have you not read the scripture, the stone which the builders rejected is become the head of the corner. He goes on to say, this is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. The Message Bible has this rendering. It says, read it for yourselves in Scripture. The stone, the masons throughout, is now the cornerstone. This is God's work. We rub our eyes. We can hardly believe it. Today I want to just share with you from this subject, rejected but ratified. Will you real quickly lean over and share with your neighbor? I know you all are kind of starched up. If your bow tie is a little tight, you can loosen it up. Amen. Amen. If you all are a little too starched, get a little comfortable if you so desire. Lean over at your neighbor, amen. You're sitting beside a brother or sister. Lean over at your neighbor and repeat our subjects. Your neighbor, neighbor. The, preacher the preacher, will preach about, will preach about. Rejected, rejected, but ratified. But ratified. Maybe that's the wrong sister or brother. Maybe it's the other brother you were trying to avoid. So lean over the other way. Amen. Lean over, get real comfortable, look at that other neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. did you hear what I said? I said, I said that the preacher, that the preacher will preach about, will preach about rejected, rejected but ratified. Now come on, give God a great God bless your praise. When we look at this particular pericope of scripture, it is housed in what is known as a synoptic gospel. Uh, this particular gospel, this synoptic gospel, uh, when you study your Bible, for those of us who have been to Sunday school since Adam left the garden, you'll understand that the synoptic gospels include Matthew, Mark, and Luke. And when you look at the word synoptic, the etymology or the etymological construct of the word, etymology is the study of words, amen. When you st understand the etymology of synoptic, uh, the word sin means together, and the word optic means seen. So what we are saying is that Matthew, Mark, and Luke uh, saw the same things. And when you look at their gospel, you'll find out that uh, some of the same stories that are in Matthew appear in Mark, and some of the same stories in Mark appear in Luke. When you understand your Bible, amen, you understand that uh, they have similar wording and sometimes they have similar sequences. Some theologians have suggested that John should be concluded or should be included with the synoptic gospels, but let me just educate you real quickly. Uh, John is not a synoptic gospel, but rather John is a canonical gospel, amen, because John was included with the Canaan. Y'all come on, say amen. Amen. Just nudge your neighbor and tell him, don't forget to say amen. Just nudge him, tell him. Don't, don't forget to say amen. But when we look at this, uh, uh, these particular gospels, amen, uh, there were other gospels that were not included in the King James Version. Uh, when we look, uh, they are called apocryphal uh, gospels. And when you look, the gospel of Malcon, or the gospel of Manny, or the gospel of Apelles, amen. You don't see those in the King James Version uh, because they said uh, King James determined uh, that those Gospels are good to know, uh, but they're not divinely inspired. <laughs> amen. There's something that are good to know, amen, uh, but it's best when you get a message from the Lord. <laughs> 
let me get through here. Uh, when we look at the Gospel of Mark, uh, Mark opens like the Gospel of John, uh, declaring the divinity of Jesus the Christ. Uh, Mark's Gospel, amen, uh, when you compare it and contrast it uh, to Matthew and Luke and John, uh, Mark's Gospel is the shortest of the four Gospels because of the audience to which Mark was writing. Mark was writing to uh, an audience much like some of us in here today. Uh, we want you to get to the point, amen, and hurry up and, and get to the benediction, y'all. They said that because we want to get to some chicken, y'all. Talk to me. Amen and hallelujah. Uh, Grandmaster said there won't be any food. I said, well, my stomach is about to touch my back. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. I got to find me a church somewhere. It is. Uh, so when we look at this gospel of Mark, uh, Mark, amen, is not like Matthew. Matthew writes to a Jewish audience. Luke writes to a Greek audience. And John writes to born again believers. Mark says my audience are uh, their Roman audience, but I want to show them that uh, Jesus is a man. He is a he is a servant that have come to serve mankind. Mark, well, how are you going to do it? Mark said, Well, I want to show you a man through these nineteen miracles that are recorded in the book. You don't believe me? I'll prove it. Eight miracles demonstrate his power over disease. Five miracles demonstrate his power over nature. Y'all sit there, I'm coming. Four miracles demonstrate his power over demons and two miracles demonstrate his power over death. And when we examine this particular text, we'll discover that this text is tailored to teach us a lesson. Hallelujah. Let's see what the lesson is in the text. I'm about to get happy here. Hey, now, let's see what the lesson is in the text. If you don't mind, I'll use uh, the system of alliteration and, and tomorrow when you get to work. Amen. If you can remember uh, the alliteration, maybe you can remember what the preacher said. I'll use R&R. &R. Look at your neighbor say R&R. R&R. R &R. If you can remember R&R, &R, then you'll remember uh, what the preacher has said because all of the points will have at least two R's. Well, let's see. Well, the first point we want to notice, amen, is found in the A clause, amen, of the verse, verse number 10. Amen. The Bible says, amen, we uh, remember, uh, it says, have you not read this scripture? So the first thing I want to tell you is you have to remember what you read. Uh, uh, can I just share with you that there uh, was some smart individual that once said that if you want to keep something from a certain group of people, uh, then the best thing for you to do.